bottle, bottle, bones, bottle. See that bottle? Like the past probably two, three months or so, there's so many bottles beside the road. For obvious reasons maybe, people are on the piss because of the situation. But I've literally jettisoned loads of bottles like that, like down out the way because there's so many that are smashed on the side of the roads. Not good. That and screws and nails. See, straight to the point. No pissing about over here. Every village. Got a bunch of those around it in certain places. You bring all your shit, if you want to get rid of your shit and put it there, they, they get disposed of it. And all your mixed waste, just toss it in there. Job done. No like going around to individual properties collecting a load of crap. You bring it here to a central point and it gets fucked off. Out, folks. Dog attack. I'm gonna get it on camera. Well, that one has some tits on it. As if one or two, like, guard dogs aren't enough, let's have fucking 20, like, you know? <laughs> I'm watching some stuff about Skinwalker Ranch on YouTube. Also, some, um, a video on ancient, like, architecture like the Egyptians and the Incas and how they cut those perfect blocks and how the fact is that in the time that they were cutting those blocks the technology didn't exist to get those cuts like on the the hardened scale or whatever it is I don't know from like quartz to diamond or something diamonds like seven and to cut granite you need like diamond a diamond cutter and that wasn't invented to like a hundred or two hundred maybe more years later so how how on earth did they cut those stones you know and to cut diamonds you need something like a mixture of bronze and phosphorus something phosphorus in your uh, your cutting equipment whether it's a wheel or whatever and also it's not the fact that they cut straight cuts on blocks right they also there was holes bored um, up to quite a large diameter in some of the stones that they found all around the world I mean Peru is quite a hot area but like ancient Sumerians and Egypt and that like how on earth did they did they do that you know and then you've got to look at the hieroglyphics. Like some of the stuff was like this, some of the stuff was built. Let's just say some stuff was built a hundred years ago, right? Without any hieroglyphics or markings on it, all right? And then some other civilization would come in and, and put their own mark on it. That's strange. And and they found they found old settlements and that, right? Uh, again, this is I'll have to put a link for the guy below. It's a long video. And they did like um, a search of the whole area and did these arche archaeological digs and things, right? And they'd find things like these massive, these massive slabs which had been cut perfectly, right? Cut. So yeah, as I was saying, these massive slabs which were like some of them weighed, right, check this out, up to 75 tonnes. Like next to this village, like below the ground, I don't know how deep, not a lot I don't think, 10 or 20 feet or something, buried for some reason. They don't know what they were for, whether even the, like the civilization uh, that was there was, you know, all the time. They, they, they never even knew they were there, you know. 
I don't know, it's, that's a lot of things just so, so bizarre, aren't they? Like how on earth, how on earth could they cut this stuff without like the use of like some sort of um, plasma or laser or like with like high pressure water or something? I really don't know. It's difficult to get your head around. Right, that's a speech that way. We're heading out here. This is an amazing shoot. It's actually better coming from that way because you can see it's a lot steeper. You can have some fun on there. I reckon I could probably get a top 10 actually from there. Um, <laughs> I actually renewed my Strava subscription just so I could see myself, you know, on leaderboards and places if I've tried hard enough. If I'm out for one of them wanker rides. I've reluctantly paid it though. It's one of them things, isn't it? If everyone didn't pay it, they'd probably have to review Stop it. Off a wanker. It's just, you're fucked, aren't you? So there you go. Anyway. Um, so yeah, you can hammer it down there. This is one of them situations though, right? If you want a long distance ride. I've got a hair in my mouth. And, uh, and I've got a lot of hair. And just say you're coming down that way or this way, but you've got a tailwind behind you, right? And say don't fight a headwind, don't fight a tailwind too. What do you mean by that P rule? Well, all because you've got a tailwind, it doesn't mean you've got to exert yourself using that tailwind when you don't need to, unless you wanna, you know, on a smash around the block or something, right? And you wanna get the job done. Otherwise you just wasted energy. If you've got a slope like this, it's a hill. You don't need to pedal, just roll down it, right? Um, but if obviously that's less of a gradient, and you don't really want to be coming to a standstill, if that makes sense. So yeah, pedal a little bit, right? But yeah, see these? When they're like that, you know, a little bit less. Energy conserve, right? So there you go, there's the little dip. We were over there. That is a corker of a run down there. You can get some serious speed. Yeah, it's hot. Probably about 90 at the moment, I expect. And it is... It's around about half past three, so it should be cooling off. In an hour and a bit. We're heading over to those... Well, around those and up the hill.